Good morning, Lord. Thank you for a new day. Thank you that your compassion is renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness and your steadfast love, O Lord. I don't know what all is going to happen today and how much I'll get done, but you do. So I give this day to you. Good morning everyone. Today we the students of group 1 are going to present on our topic the impact of British rule in India. It is important for every citizen to learn about it. This presentation is presented by Arya Anvesha, Arya Kumari, Aditi Rai, Advita Rani, Akansha Sinha, Akriti Raj and Anupriya Kumari. The Queen's Proclamation Act declared the Britishers as the superior body of India. Cash crops like cotton and indigo replaced the food grains. The power of Zamindar and the wealth of Britishers increased by leaps and bounds, as did the exploitation of the peasants by the moneylender. Economic policies The land revenue derived from India was the biggest source of income for the Britishers. Economic changes brought by them were mainly aimed to increase their source of income. Sayatwari system This system of land revenue was introduced by Sir Thomas Munro. Under this system, the farmers were known as riots. Direct settlements was made between farmer and the Britishers. The amount of revenue was based on the quality of the soil and nature of crops produced for 30 years. The revenue rates of Rayatwari system were 50% where the land was dry and 60% of irrigated land. Peasants were forced to pay huge amount of revenue. Mahalwari system Mahalwari system was introduced in 1830 in the gigantic plains of western Uttar Pradesh parts of Madhya Pradesh and Punjab. In this system, the villages were known as Mahals. The headman of each Mahal was responsible to pay the taxes to the British collector. The amount of revenue was not fixed in the Mahalwari system. Effects of land revenue system Land became a sellable commodity. Zamindars were interested in maximizing their revenue collection. Farmers gradually became landless. Lands were broken into small holdings for auctions and sales. No interest on the side of Britishers resulted in the loss of fertility of land. Cultivation became weak. Commercialization of Indian ag agriculture and development of cash crops like cotton, tea, jute and indigo. Indian industry and trade. India had a thriving cotton textile industry in the pre-British period. Banaras, Krishnanagar, Dhaka, Baruch, Ahmedabad, Agra, Lucknow, Mathura were its main centers. Indian Muslim and Calico were exported in large amounts in the European countries. Mughal emperors encouraged the arrival of the European trading earned from this trade. Many luxury items like silk, jewels, muslin, metal and enamel ware were exported. Impact of Industrial Revolution on Indian Industry and Trade Prohibit sales of Indian cotton in England Handlooms were replaced by machine looms Labor intensive was replaced by machine As a result, which was at one time an exporting country was reduced to a big consumer of English goods Raw materials were exported at cheaper rates Skilled craftsmen also lost their patronization and craftsmen also lost their patronization and power under the British rule. Drain of Wealth Dada Bhai Naroji was one of the greatest leaders of India. He wrote a book named Poverty and Under British Rule in India. According to him, wealth was drained away to Britain in many ways and forms. Profit from trade and British industries export of raw materials from India and income derived from land revenue in India was sent as home charges to England. During 20th century, an attempt was made to revive the dying textile industry of India. Indian development became one of the important priorities for Indian government. Social and educational policies The British society 
underwent a radical transformation in the 18th and 19th centuries due to the French Revolution and Industrial Revolution in England. In this period, the attitude, the thinking and the lifestyle of people of England changed with the rise in the spirit of nationalism, humanism and progress. Rationalism rejected superstitious beliefs and encouraged the concepts of scientific thinking. Humanism promoted the ideas of love and respect for human beings and gave rise to the principle of liberty, equality and fertility amongst the people. Three new groups emerged with influenced the administrative policies in India. These groups were known as conservatives, imperialists and radicals. Educational system. Before the arrival of the British in India, the Indian education was very flexible. The children received elementary education in parshalas and maktabs, and higher education was mainly taught in tolls and madras. Elementary education enabled the students to become liberate enough to maintain accounts. British reforms. In the beginning, a few schools imparting Western education were opened in Madras, Bombay and Bengal for the children of Indian employees of East India Company at persuasion by Christian missionaries. Calcutta Madras was established, was established in 1781. Sanskrit college started functioning at Varanasi in 1791 and the Fort William College was set up in Calcutta in 18. Charter Act of 1813 The Charter Act of 1813 was the first step towards education being made an objective of the government. It directed the East India Company to sanction 1 lakh rupees for the educational needs of the Indians. One group known as Orientalists supported the promotion of the traditional Indian learning through classical and regional languages. Another group known as the Anglicists wanted to promote Western education in India through English language. This group was led by Lord Thomas Macaulay, who was the law member of the Governor's General Council. Education under the British Lord Macaulay outlined three main objectives of the education in India. These were to form a class of interpreters between the British rulers and the millions of Indians they ruled, to create a class of persons, Indian in blood and colour, but British in taste, opinions, morals, and intellect to obtain a cheap supply of clerks for holding subordinate posts in administration and British business concerns. Woods Dispatch Aim of the government's education policy was teaching Western education. Declared that for higher education, English language was the perfect medium. Proposed the setting up of vernacular primary schools followed by the Anglo-vernacular high schools. Grants in aid to encourage and force private enterprise. Emphasize the importance of technical education and the need for establishing technical schools and colleges. The effect of the Western education. First, Western system of education in India with the purpose of producing English-speaking clerks who could work at lower wages. Second, reduce the heavy expenditure involved in the British administration in India. Third, the new system of education introduced by the British also had some positive effects on India peoples. Indian came to know about modern Western political ideas such as liberty, equality, democracy, and nationalism. Social, cultural, and religious impact. First, Lord William Bentick served as Governor General of India between 1825. Second, fear of unmarried daughters and expenses of their marriage. Third, Kill their newborn daughters due to these reasons or some of them sacrifice their children in the name of religion. Development of Transport and Communication Transport and communication system in India was not well developed. The first railway line was opened from Bombay to Thane by Lord Dalhousie. Railways ensured quick transfer of troops and ammunition during the revolts and easy transpiration of raw material and manufactured goods for trading purpose. Railways also brought people of India closer to one another and renewed their sense of unity and nationalism. 
build high network of roads, canals and railways which would link an efficient and modern postal system and introduce the telegraph.